Actually, coming up right now is Swami Beyond Ananda. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you've laughed with him. Swami Beyond Ananda is an internationally known author, humorist, and workshop leader. You may know him as the cosmic comic who brings comedy disguised as wisdom, or is it wisdom disguised as comedy? Hmm. Well, Swami is the author of three books, Driving Your Own Karma, When You See a Sacred Cow, Milk It for All It's Worth, and Duck Soup for the Soul. Swami's latest mission is to revitalize the body politic by turning spiritual devotees into political votees. And for the past 18 years, he has led workshops on comedy as a healing art. Sounds hilariously intelligent. Please join me in welcoming Steve Bowerman, a.k.a. Swami Beyond Ananda. Must have been my lunch. Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay, now who has seen the Swami before? Well, you're seeing him again. <laughs> who has seen the Swami but don't remember? Okay, that is called Vujade. <laughs> Vujade is when something actually has happened, only you forgot. <laughs> now, it's great to be here, and you know what? We have no choice. Because no matter where we are, we're always here, right? And it's always now. So who would like to be in the now more? Up oh, too late. Already then. Sorry. <laughs> but I predict that living in the now will be the wave of the future. <laughs> and time itself will become a thing of the past. <laughs> hey, it's already happening. The Nostalgia Channel has started doing reruns of the, of the Today Show. <laughs> They're calling it yesterday. <laughs> and here's how it works. If you miss today's Today Show today, you can catch today's Today tomorrow on yesterday. <laughs> and it's, it's quite amazing. This is my first time at the Oregon Country Fair. I have to say this. I feel like I've been committed to a sane asylum. <laughs> what a great place. I, I've been coming to Oregon, by the way, for about 20 years. And the first time I came to Eugene was for a psychic fair, which was canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. <laughs> but I did go to see one of those psychic surgeons, you know, had three psychics removed. <laughs> and of course, now with all of the personal growth that has taken place in the last 20 years, all of those mediums are now largest. <laughs> Of course, when I first came here, Eugene, Oregon was, was actually plagued with, uh, with New Age crime in those days. People, no, really, yeah. New Age muggers, when they take your money, they say, why did you create this? <laughs> when they leave, they say, thank you for sharing. It's very good. <laughs> and, and of course, I love coming here to, to, the, to this part of the world because there's so much creativity and innovation, particularly around the environment. Somebody right here in Eugene, I just heard about it, they actually created the world's first solar-powered tanning salon. <laughs> Honest, yeah. It's outdoors. I just got back from the Ascended Masters Golf Tournament, which is a fabulous event. <laughs> Now, I, I hope I'm not offending you, but I find watching golf, I find that boring. <laughs> to me, watching golf is like listening to bowling on the radio. You know? <laughs> but the Ascended Masters is a fabulous event. This year, Buddha got a wholeness and oneness. <laughs> and they held it in the Himalayas, and in the Himalayas, there are these beings who are so spiritually evolved that they no longer need to eat food. Did you know, did you know about that? They exist on breath alone. So, no, somebody got the idea to open up a breatharian restaurant up there. Now, they don't serve any food, but the atmosphere is terrific. <laughs> so, of course, I had to check this place out. I, I went there, and I see these three guys walking by. They have clothes spent out their noses like this. They were fasting. <laughs> 
Now, you're not gonna believe this. One of them was so spiritually evolved, not only doesn't he eat food, he doesn't drink water either. His name is Pierre. <laughs> now, see, that was time release, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Tomorrow you're gonna laugh for no reason, I promise. It's not that bad being a breatharian, you know. Of course, they can't break bread with anyone, but you can still break wind with them. So. We call it gastral projection, very powerful. Thing. Now, we're living in very, very interesting times. It's been predicted that a great shift will be taking place. I know many people are asking, why is this shift happening to me? <laughs> well, because shift happens, that's why. And the astrologers tell us that there's a very narrow window of time where we have to act. So in other words, it's shift or get off the pot, folks. That's how it, that's how it is. And you know, we're getting all of the spiritual help that we need. I don't know if you're aware of it, but the angelic energies have been coming in. Have you been feeling the angels? Yes. You know, they had to upgrade the whole system. Now it's every time a cell phone rings, an angel gets his wings. <laughs> and the Fox Network, you know, they're a little edgy. They're coming up with their new angel show. They got an angel show, but it's edgy. It's going to be called Inappropriately Touched by an Angel. So. <laughs> and of course, I am very fortunate to have my power animal with me all the time. That would be Bullwinkle. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate that, and I'll tell you why. Bullwinkle is my power animal, because no matter what your problem is, if you channel Bullwinkle to tell people your problems, it sounds funnier. <laughs> so let's say you lost your job and you have no money. Channel Bullwinkle. I just lost my job and I have no money. <laughs> That's funnier, right? <laughs> so maybe you can see I'm, I'm wearing my Musafix here. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> I play no favorites. I have a squirrel of David at home, so. <laughs> and you know, actually, Jesus came to me in a dream. He asked me to wear this. I said, well, what does it mean? He says, it means, for Christ's sake, lighten up. <laughs> because the best, a, lot of, a lot of heaviness on the planet, and the best way to overcome gravity is with levity. Because there's a lot of fear, a lot of fear, you know, fear gnomes, little gnomes of gnawing fear have been released into the mainstream, making us more susceptible to mad cowboy disease. <laughs> now that is where the body politic is put into a state of catalepsy and herded into the bewilderness, yes? <laughs> now we, al we also suffer from deficit inattention disorder, yes? <laughs> You know, just recently, you probably didn't read about this in the paper, but we, we passed an important milestone. The American dollar is now worth slightly less than the dollar in Monopoly money. <laughs> and, of course, the final Greenspan report was the average American family doesn't have enough green to spend the average month. <laughs> this is, of course, due to what they call the trickle-down theory, yes? That's why the people at the bottom are called peons, yes? <laughs> I think something is trickling down. <laughs> now, of course, the war on terror, yes, uh, is very, to me, very terrifying. And uh, although it has made our lives uh, a lot simpler, they've taken the Bill of Rights, boiled it down to just one. You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> And you know, like any other war, there's been great technological advances. You know, back in the 1960s, President John F. Kennedy declared he would have a man on the moon by the end of that decade, and look how far we've come. Thanks to the so-called Patriot Act, George Bush can have a man on Uranus by the end of the week. <laughs> For the irony curtain has come down. The irony curtain. That is the invisible wall of impropaganda that separates we, the people, from the truth. Now, we used to have freedom of the press, but now mainstream media is, is a brainwashing machine stuck on spin, yes? <laughs> That's what we apparently seem to have. Because, you know, the media has inundated us with so much toxic BS that our skeptic system is overflowed. <laughs> And we end up swallowing huge ironies whole. This is called irony deficiency. 
Now, seeing a doctor won't help, but seeing a paradox will. Yeah. So here's an irony supplement to Monchon. How about this one? Two men lying together is an abomination. But when a whole bunch of men lie together to abomination, that's okay. <laughs> Irony deficiency. So, you know, when I was introduced, it was a great introduction, but uh, I have a new book out called Swami for Precedent, a seven-step plan to heal the body politic and cure electile dysfunction. <laughs> now, it's precedent, not precedent, because if we the people create a new precedent, a new precedent will follow. Because we only do what we've always done, we will only get what we've always got. So we have to create a new precedent. So how about this one? This would be new. Government of the people, by the people, for the people, where the government does our bidding, not the bidding of the highest bidder. <laughs> how would that be? Yeah. Now, you know, we, we've been trying, you know, I'll tell you something, we've been trying to put our, 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 our weight behind the Democrats, but let's face it, I have to be blunt here. For the past eight years, Republicans have been playing hardball Democrats have been playing hardly have balls. <laughs> so the solution is we the people have to realize that we are the leaders we've been waiting for. We have to elect ourselves. George Bush did it, why not us? <laughs> now we don't need a revolution in this country, we already had one. What we need now is an evolution. So how do you how do you start an evolution? Well, we can start by firing a couple of big shots, huh? <laughs> that would be the beginning. And we realize, of course, that in this evolution, that we, uh, that we the people have to begin to talk to one another and begin to tell and face the truth together. Because as you know, the truth shall upset you free. <laughs> but we have to begin to get into the conversation and work together because our government has been preemptive. We don't really we're not in charge anymore, if we ever were. You know, because after, you know, we have these corporations, many of them live offshore, only come onshore to feed. <laughs> and some of them pay little or no taxes because they realize it's a lot more efficient to pay the legislators directly. <laughs> Eliminate the middleman, yes? And that is how the golden rule is turned into the rule of gold. And we have a gold-collar crime wave in this country. Because many of these, these corporations, they're using their energy, what the Chinese call qi, to take unfair advantage. That is called qi ting. <laughs> so the good news is people are waking up and people are wising up, and that's good. We could use a good upwising. <laughs> And people are seeking wisdom. How many seekers of wisdom do we have with us? Very good. Well, as you know, there's a seeker born every minute. <laughs> and who to take him along the path? Uh, it's not easy being on the path, right? No, it's not easy. If you're on the path, you have to watch very carefully where you step. So I am writing a new book about being on the path, looking out for number two. <laughs> <It's everywhere. laughs> Now, of course, I too was a seeker of wisdom. In fact, I tried so many spiritual paths, I was pathological. <laughs> I expanded my mind so much I could no longer fit through my door. <laughs> Had to go to a shrink. <laughs> I was addicted to spirit. I was hitting the source pretty hard in those days. <laughs> Of course, I'm all recovered now, yes, yes. I, anybody ever go to one of those codependency groups? I'm curious, anybody? Yeah, I thought about going to one, but I couldn't find anybody to go with. <laughs> when I did go, I found out that I'm addicted to chocolate. So not only am I codependent, I'm co-codependent. <laughs> And you know, they have these groups for everybody nowadays. There are groups for people who feel like nobody's. Anonymous, anonymous. <laughs> they have an unlisted number, you can't find it. 
Now, I know this is going to, this may be a stretch for you, but do we actually have any overachievers with us here in this crowd? Okay, good news for you. We have a new group called Overachievers Anonymous. They have a 24-step program. <laughs> Just keep going and going and going. But listen, listen, I think I've discovered the ultimate recovery group. Children of parents. I think we have a few of those with us. <laughs> now, people ask me all the time, Swami, will there ever be peace on Earth? I've got good news. There will be peace on Earth. I sure hope we humans are around to enjoy it, though, huh? Are we going to achieve critical mass before critical massacre? That is the question. So the human race is involved in a race with time. And if we really do want to create peace, we have to begin where we are. We have to actually begin with our own taking responsibility for our own emotions, yes? So let's say you're on the road, right? And somebody cuts you off and you want to say, you're an inconsiderate jerk. You have to take a deep breath. You have to stop yourself and say, take responsibility. Why did I create an inconsiderate jerk like you in my life? <laughs> And listen, the best energy, see again, this is the law of karma, which is what goes around comes around, so you can actually get rear-ended by your own karma eventually. <laughs> and so you only want to put blessing out into the world, only blessing, yes? So somebody cuts you off, you go, bless you, you blessing blessed. <laughs> go bless yourself. <laughs> bless you too. Much better, right? <laughs> so I help you channel your energy, yes. Um, I've created a technique called tantrum yoga. <laughs> Use your anger to heat your home in the wintertime. <laughs> tantrum yoga, that's where you hold your breath until God gives you what you want. <laughs> that's how Krishna turned blue. I'll be a blue Krishna. <laughs> now, you see, it's the jacket. I got it in Las Vegas um, at an Elvis convention. You know that? No, there's a El the Elvis religion. Are you familiar with this? <laughs> Presbyterianism? <laughs> it's one of those new light religions. Same, uh, it's a, um, same satisfying flavor. Only one-third the commandments. <laughs> because Elvis has only three things from us. Love me tender, please surrender, return to sender. That's all. <laughs> I became an Elvis's witness. <laughs> I'm serious. I went door to door proselytizing every Saturday night. <laughs> Ring the doorbell. Are you lonesome tonight? You know, some of these people go right to Graceland. I'm telling you. Because tantrum yoga is not for everybody. Some people really want to actually be able to create peace more quickly than that. And we do that by only speaking words of peace. So I have developed the peace mantra. Would you like to learn the peace mantra? Something is upsetting to you, you take a deep breath. Because after all, breathing is the key to long life, you know. <laughs> we breathe in, we inspire. When we don't, we expire. So keep breathing, everybody. And then we do the, the peace mantra, it goes like this. Ah, peace on it. Try that with me, please. Ah, peace on it. Then you feel more peaceful already, I bet you. Now, the other thing about being peaceful is we have to listen carefully to the language that we use. We're always using this war metaphors, right? We have to be conscious about that. Like, for example, the war on poverty. Well, it's all over. The poor people surrendered a long time ago. <laughs> the war on drugs? I have a better idea. Improve reality instead. <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> now, of course, you know, we, we have this wonderful national anthem that's a beautiful song. But you know what? Maybe it's time that we stop affirming bombs bursting in air. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, you know, we, we have smart bombs. Now we all, now we need, all we need are leaders smart enough to know when using even the smartest bomb is stupid. Yeah. 
Now, and, and, and so also, it's very, very important that we, we be conscious of the words that we're using, and also the national anthem. What is it with these ramparts? I think the whole idea of ramparts is pretty perverse, okay? I don't care how gallantly they may be screaming, I don't want to watch ramparts. The only ones who should be looking at ramparts are sheep, okay? That's all. We humans have been ramming parts for far too long. And all of this rutting has gotten us into a rut. Because when you only have this aggressive male energy in our government, you know what you have? A stagnation. We need to balance it and have the feminine energy make a donation. Why not? Why not? And maybe together we can access the most underused resource on the planet, imagination. Imagination, because nothing really changes unless we can imagine that it's different. So that's a very, very powerful thing. So, you know, a lot of people, not this crowd, but there's a lot of people who are plugged in to the TV, right? You know, I have to say this, there is only one TV news network actually telling the truth about what they're broadcasting. CBS. <laughs> You want a CBS? You came to the right place. <laughs> so if you don't like the current programming, turn off your TV and television instead. That's where I television to you, you television to me. And we have healing and functional visions to step into, and that beats what we've been stepping into. <laughs> My guru, Harry Cohen Baba, the Garmin Center saint, very powerful teacher. He said that life is like a good deli. Even if something isn't on the menu, if enough people order it, they have to make it. <laughs> so if we want something different, we have to put in our order. We have to put in our order, our, our new world order form, okay? In the form of imagination. So I'll television. How about this? How about think tanks where they think about more than tanks? <laughs> tanks, but no tanks. <laughs> How about young people living for their country instead of dying for it? How would that be? Imagine the unarmed, the unarmed forces victorious everywhere. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Swami, you're proposing a sane world. You must be crazy. <laughs> well, you know, I think we need better choices than the ones we've had. I mean, Saddam Hussein, George, who's not sane, we could do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not trying to change the world either. That is very inefficient. There's a better way. I say let's toilet train the world and we'll never have to change it again. <laughs> now people say, are you, a, are you a creationist? Are you an evolutionist? I am a creationist and an evolutionist. Because I believe that we humans were created to evolve. Otherwise Jesus would have said, now don't do a thing till I get back. <laughs> So I say it's time for children of God to become adults of God. You know, maybe the Ten Commandments, maybe that was too many. Maybe we need one suggestion. Let's go for heaven on earth just for the hell of it. Now I have a new non-religion. It's called fundamentalism with the accent on the fun. Not to be confused with fundamentalism, accent on the mental. <laughs> See, the fundamentalists say, heaven is above us. The fundamentalists say, heaven is where we make it. So that's our job. We're not here to earn God's love, we're here to spend it. <laughs> we call this supply-side spirituality. <laughs> Be more supplying and less demanding, that's all. <laughs> so this is the part of the program where I will answer your questions and you will question my answers. And, and by the way, you're a very evolved group and you realize, of course, that each of us already has all of the answers within. It's matching them with the corresponding questions. That's the challenge. <laughs> and so if you have an answerable question, I will have a questionable answer for you. So here's a question for this one. Yes. 
what happens in 2012? You know, it's very, very interesting. I'm actually writing a book called the 2012, The Mystery is Solved. And you can look for it in 2013. <laughs> See, in all of my past predictions, I have 100% Accuracy, <laughs> but that's only about the past. You see, that's the past. now. Of course, actually, I'm 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 not making predictions these days because I don't want to jeopardize my nonprofit status. <laughs> and in California, you may not be aware of this. In California, you can now sue your psychic. Did you know about this? No. Here's how it works. If you're a sucker for a seer, and what the seer sees sucks, you can redress your grievance in a seer sucker suit. <laughs> A sucker for a seer, and what the seer sees sucks. You can read that shirt, read in the seer sucker suit. <laughs> it's okay, it's all channeled anyway. So. Okay, another question. Yes. Why did it take so long for the Swami to come to country fair? Well, you know, I've actually had concerns about, you know, we are in Oregon is clearly a higher state. <laughs> Compared to California, which is a lower, Texas is one of the really, you know, miss, really low states down there. And so, when I was here last time, I had something happen that was very, that concerned me very much. As soon as I crossed the border, my auric energy field disappeared. And then I saw the sign, Welcome to Oregon! <laughs> Yeah, we created a farce field for that one, yeah. So. Okay, who else? Yes. What's the difference between gender and sex? What is the difference between gender and sex? Well, I guess one is a noun and one is a verb, huh? <laughs> <laughs> who had gender last night? <laughs> now listen, you're asking the Swami. You're asking the Swami, I was celibate for 14 years. But when I turned 15, I said, enough of that. <laughs> what else you got? Yes. No, no, that, that is very, very good. Well, well the, the cre he wants to do the creative process. Okay, well, first thing, we are, you know, this is the information age, and we are inundated with so much information that thought particles get caught between the ears. <laughs> can, can, that, that creates a condition called truth decay. Yes. And so before I sit down to write, I have to clear my mind with mental floss, like this. <laughs> That's the first step. Then I have to release the ego. Would you like to find out a simple way to release the ego? Simple three-word mantra. Ego, egoing, egon. Like that. <laughs> and then basically, uh, uh, again, because I've been doing this for so long, I, my clown chakra has been opened, as you can tell. <laughs> And I can access farce fields. I can see jokes developing before they actually, uh, actually. Uh. Now listen, you know, laughter, this is, very, this is very, very important. I'm glad that you realized this because I don't know if you're aware of this, but you know, the, the healing power of laughter, you heard about Norman Cousins. He, he was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, checked into a hotel room with Marx Brothers movies and candid camera reruns, and he got well. No, and when he cured himself, the medical establishment decided they are going to study the healing power of laughter, which is kind of like, well, it works in practice, but does it work in theory? <laughs> That's why those guys get the big bucks, yes? But they actually studied laughter, and they found that when we laugh, it creates these hormones called endorphins, our natural painkillers. And uh, laughing improves immune function and laughter lowers the blood pressure because when we laugh, it causes our blood vessels to dilate better than having them die early. <laughs> I want mine to dilate. 
something else. You're gonna love this. Laughing burns calories. So I'm starting a new program called Laugh Your Ass Off. It works. Yes. Does my mother enjoy my humor? Well, I don't know. I mean, from somewhere, um, from somewhere, I'm sure she does. I'm sure she does right now. Um, I, she humored me. Actually, you know, uh, she caught me amusing myself when I was a young child. <laughs> She's never gotten over that. <laughs> Who else? I have several answers left, so come on. <laughs> yes? You said you were channeling some of your information. What channel do you watch? What channel do I watch? Well, actually, you know what? I, I, all the, everybody's channeling nowadays, so the, all the channels are taken up. I've had to go on cable. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, after, you know, really, if you think about it, these channeled entities, they want to get into bodies because this is where the action is, you know? <laughs> People in bodies have more fun. And these disembodied ones, I feel bad for them because they have very low self-esteem. They feel like nobodies. <laughs> so it's important to be able to bring many of these people in. And you know what? I think, you know, we, we, this is a group very conscious about the environment, about global warming about shrinking our footprint. I, I'm doing my part, I'm wearing smaller shoes to start with. <laughs> but I think that the key to all of the, you know, the, the human impact on the environment, I think the secret, multiple personalities. <laughs> now, I read about this guy who has 10 personalities. Now, that's efficiency. <laughs> if we had more people like that, we'd need fewer people. <laughs> I figured, how does a guy end up with 10 personalities? Then I read the rest of the article. They arrested him for identity theft. <laughs> okay, who else? Yes. Do I eat animals? Well, I'm on a transitional vegetarian diet. I only eat animals that are vegetarians. <laughs> now listen, I studied with a guru. I, I lived in Texas, believe it or not, until I went to a DTEX. <laughs> I was a sacred cowpoke. Um, I studied with a guru in Texas who actually advocated eating beef. His name was Barbecue. <laughs> now, you know, in the Native American tradition, it's okay to eat animals, but you have to create this relationship and respect. And when you don't do that, you create a lot of karmic debris. Hmm? So, I don't know if you're aware of this. In his later years, Colonel Sanders was plagued by the ghosts of chickens. <laughs> now, you heard of poultry, guys? That's what this was. <laughs> yeah, every, you know, everybody has, you know, there's so many different conversations about what's the best diet and these people arguing with each other. We call those diet tribes. <laughs> I finally set, settled on a diet that works for me. I am on the mucus-free diet because mucus is the easiest thing to give up. <laughs> yes. Can you hear dogs laughing? Can I hear dogs laughing? Now that is a very, very important question because dogs do laugh. They have, they do this. <laughs> I, I knew a dog that caught Dutch elm disease, by the way, and he lost his bark. And it was a lot like that. Okay, I know you didn't like that answer, but uh, I wasn't that crazy about the question, so. Okay, yes. Do you have fear of flying? Do I have fear of flying? Well, without an airplane, yes. I have... No, I travel on the higher planes all the time. Uh, when they lose your baggage there, it's a good thing because, you know, you don't want to take your baggage into it the next lifetime. And uh, on, the, on the higher planes, uh, on the higher planes, you never know who you're going to be sitting next to, yes? No, I was sitting next to this guy. He looked very familiar. I said, you look very familiar. He says, yes, I am George Gershwin. I said, George Gershwin, the composer? He said, yes. I said, my goodness, what are you doing these days? He said, decomposing. 
He had a great sense of humor, that, uh, that George Mason. Yes, yes. But he told me, is that it? He told me that he uh, actually <clears throat> was very, very sad because of the most oxymoronic oxymoron in the world, which is holy war in the Holy Land. <laughs> holy cow pie, right? <laughs> and he was concerned that they, we have the Palestinians and the Israelis, they are cousins, and they can't seem to make peace to save their lives. And so he gave me the song for peace in the Middle East. So can I share this song with you? Yes. Okay. It goes like this. You say salam and I say shalom. You throw a bomb, I blow up your home. Salam, <laughs> shalom, we blow up our home. Let's call the old thing off. <laughs> You say baraka, I say baruka, I spin the dreidel, you toke the hookah, baruka, baraka, this warfare, it's caca, let's call the whole thing off. And oh, if we call the whole thing off, we'll all be right. And oh, if we all are right, well, there's no need to fight. I eat the kasha, you eat the kibby. We both dig falafel, but never pork ribby. To kasha, to kibby, forget the pork ribby. At least there's one thing we agree on. Haven't we had enough? Let's call the old thing off, uh-huh. Let's call the old thing off, oh yeah. Let's call the old thing off. Thank you. Thank you. If, if we do have more time, if you oh, have okay, more no, answers. Keep, oh, I'm going to keep going. Okay. okay. I see people okay. waving. Oh, good. Okay, good. I thought I saw the five-minute thing. I just saw people's hands. That's all. Oh, the are clapping. Okay. okay, I'll keep going. Okay, more questions. Was 9-11 an inside job? Was 9-11 an inside job? No, I am a coincidence theorist. <laughs> Amazing coincidences happen. <laughs> imagine, imagine this. The exact war that they need gets caused by these buildings falling down that look like planned demolitions. How did that happen? An amazing coincidence. <laughs> so I think it's very, very important that we begin to, we begin to look at this and to reinvestigate um, uh, the fossilized fools fueled by fossil fuels who seem to be in charge. <laughs> I think that'd be very, very important. Okay, who else? Yes. What's the key to enlightenment? The key to enlightenment. Well, I've got bad news and good news. <laughs> the bad news is there is no key to enlightenment. The good news is it's been left unlocked. <laughs> okay, who else? Yes. Can, uh, if you want to know about beyond Ananda. Okay, now, as you may know, beyond uh, Ananda means bliss. So beyond Ananda, you go to bliss, it's another 500 yards. You can't miss it. <laughs> I'm right there. Yes. Are you married? Am I married? Uh, yes, absolutely. I've got a wonderful, um, you know, I, after going through my, all, the, all of the great mysticism, I wanted to, I went through many, many mystical experiences, and then I said, you know, I would like to have a Mrs. Tickle experience. <laughs> so I got married, yes. That's a good question. Who else? Yes. Mom, are you still driving your own karma? Am I driving my own karma? Yes, I'm driving my karma and I'm curbing my dogma. And uh, speaking of that, I actually have a CD called Drive Your Karma, Curb Your Dogma. And um, there's a song on there I want to share with you. I feel compelled to share it with these people. Because, you know, one of, the, one of the, the things that we have to do is we have to reframe everything that we have right now. You know, we seem to be headed for Armageddon and Judgment Day. But I say we can turn around and create this Armageddon and non-Judgment Day. <laughs> non-Judgment Day, that is when everybody wins beauty contests. <laughs> On non-judgment day, all of the lawyers disappear. 
We won't need them. Our trials will be over, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to sing a song called Non-Judgment Day. It's on this CD called Drive Your Comic Curb Your Dog. It goes like this. If we treat everybody the same, there'll be nobody left to blame. Gotta forget if you're gonna forgive. Gotta give everything you've been given to give. Not an eye for an eye, it's live and let live. On non-judgment day, on the day non-judgment dawns, I know that everyone will just get along. Arabs and Jews will be pals in Palestine. Arafat will send Sharon a valentine. Planting olive trees instead of landmines. On non-judgment day, don't live your life in guilt or fear, because the kingdom of God is here. No need to sleep on nails or have your head shaved. You won't go to hell if you've misbehaved. You've always been safe. You don't have to be saved. On non-judgment day, at the end we'll all throw a party. Absolutely everybody will be there. Hitler will dance with gold in my ear. Jerry Falwell will tango with a couple of queers. And even Jesus will be turning water to beer on non-judgment day. Thank you. Okay, somebody else. Yes. Will Barack Obama win the presidency? Well, you know, actually, the one thing that, is, of course, a lot of people are disappointed with, with Barack Obama, but that's because they don't n understand the Democratic Party. <laughs> Which is the tweedle, tweedle dweeb to the tweedle dumb that we have on the other side. But the one good thing about Barack Obama is that there's potential for really bringing people together because right now we have a red tribe Republicans, blue tribe Democrats, fighting over whether it's more wrong to kill the born or the unborn. <laughs> Meanwhile, plenty of born people are being killed and the bill is being sent to the not yet born. So the fact that Barack Obama is actually bringing people together in, in like maybe things could possibly change, that is the positive sign. But we need to regrow America from the grassroots up. That's what we have to do. And that is the key. And have a heaven of a time doing it, by the way. Okay, more questions? We had a question? <laughs> Past lives. Uh, how many people have uh, been there done that? <laughs> <laughs> how many people believe in reincarnation? I'm curious. Reincarnation. Good to see you again. <laughs> Who does not believe in reincarnation? Well, next lifetime. Be patient. <laughs> No, I'm, I believe in reincarnation. I'm, I'm what, I think God, God is a recycler, don't you? You know? I'm about to call it born again, 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 Krishna. Now, do you remember your past lives? You and I, very significant past life, sitting at the feet of the Buddha. Anybody remember sitting at the feet of the Buddha? Buddha never washed his feet. So we were part of that first recovery group called Odor Eaters Anonymous, yes? Yeah? People who spend too much time sitting at the feet of gurus, yes? But this gentleman, a quiet, quiet gentleman, but every time the Buddha would sit to meditate, right? You would interrupt him with a question. And they ended up naming a city after you. Budapest. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I can see that. Will George Bush be prosecuted? Well, you know what? I, th I think that that would be a very good idea. I think maybe we need to put the decider through the decider mill. <laughs> now, I think we also have to balance this out by understanding that George Bush has created more awakening on the planet than all of the spiritual teachers combined. <laughs> It's like the story about the very world-famous minister who dies and goes to heaven. And he arrives at the pearly gates at the same time as his cab driver from New York. They let the cab driver in, and the minister is waiting patiently. 
And pretty soon he gets a little impatient. He calls over the attending angel. He says, excuse me, I am a world famous minister. How come you let that cab driver in? I'm waiting outside. Angel says, well, because when you preached, everybody slept. But when he drove, everybody prayed. <laughs> So George Bush has been a source of great awakening on this planet. So now that we're awake, we don't need him anymore, yes? And we need to go right up the Cheney of Command, if you know what I mean. Okay, who else? Yes. What is the meaning of life? Okay, now listen. You may be surprised to hear this, but I get that question from time to time. And I get the question so often that I have to ask myself, what is the subtext behind the question? What is it that people really want to know? <laughs> I'm serious, I think people really want to know. It's like, what is the meaning of this? People really want to know, why is it that bad things happen to good people? And I think I have it figured out. God is dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> Not an A student, you know. He created the universe for a sixth grade science project, got a C, huh? And that lack of perfection reassuring. You know, it's like the story about the um, the priest and the Monsignor who are playing golf, and the priest hits one into the woods, he goes, damn it, I missed. And the Monsignor begins to get upset. He says, oh, you cannot take the Lord's name in vain. And the priest is, of course, embarrassed. And they play a little further, and the priest hits one into the lake. He goes, damn it, I missed. And once again, the Monsignor gets upset. And this goes on for a while. Finally, the priest is so embarrassed, he says, if I ever say that again, may a thunderbolt strike me down. And they keep playing, and sure enough, he hits one, he misses the shot, he goes, damn it, I missed. And from the sky comes a thunderbolt that hits the Monsignor. <laughs> and we hear a voice going, damn it, I missed. <laughs> find reassurance in a universe like that, don't you? Uh, I make a mistake. Uh, easy come, easy go. I'll make another one of them. Anybody else? Okay, anybody else? More questions? More answers? One more song! One more song! Okay, you want, okay, uh, okay. Would you like a song for healing? Sure. Okay, I'm going to channel. See, I'll, I only channel dead people. That's how the channeling works. So I have to channel, I can't channel anybody who's alive. So I have to channel the late, great Bobby Darren. Okay, here it comes. Somewhere beyond disease, somewhere bodies are free. Someday we'll fly forever high and never again bodies failing somewhere beyond disease high above low frequencies together we'll play on non-judgment day and never again i'll go ailing it's far beyond the stars it's here right where we are i know beyond the doubt it's out Beyond karma, we'll greet all other souls. Behold that we are whole. Happy we'll be beyond disease. And never again, bodies failing. No more ailing. No more ailing. Just so sailing beyond disease, beyond disease, beyond disease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take a seat. You got Thank you so much. Something else related to laughter and the healing power. I read something. Physiologically, laughter is a lot like orgasm. So thank you for coming. May the forest be with you. Thank you. Thank you.
There's a book signing, wherever that may be. I think they set up a table. Wakeuplaughing.com. Thank you. Book signing is right there. Okay, good. I'll be there in a minute.